A lot of news on the Trump transition front. The president-elect has picked KT McFarland to be his deputy national security advisor and former FEC chairman Don McGahn as his White House counsel. We're going to have more on that later in the show, but first, a heated battle is apparently brewing within the Trump team about the secretary of state position. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney is reportedly being considered for the job, but some of the president-elect's closest supporters are expressing concerns about Romney, pointing to a sharp criticism of Mr. Trump during the election. Trump senior advisor Kellyanne Conway weighing in on Twitter, quote, Kissinger and Schultz as secretaries of state flew around the world less, counseled POTUS close to home more, and were loyal. Good checklist. Others close to the president-elect have mixed reactions. He probably needs to say that more publicly, and I think a lot of the, uh, the strife would dissipate at that point. What I love about Mr. Trump, the president-elect, is that he has got a bridge open to everybody in the community. He sent a message to us at the executive transition team level that we want A++ players on the team, and Governor Romney is an A++ player. Communications are afoot today, NASA. Mm -hmm. What do you make of sort of the mixed messages? Obviously, the press saying there's some internal conflict over this. Real, uh, specifically, very hardcore, like Trump loyalists saying this isn't someone you should pick. Then you've got like the Rudy camp, the Mitt camp, and then Kelly weighing in. Well, one of the things that's different from previous administrations and transition teams is that this is not being done behind the scenes. It's not like they're backstabbing. They're actually on the record. Saying this, so that mm -hmm. actually, I guess, if you, that's a, just a different way of doing things. But it's not like they're um, hiding their true feelings, <laughs> and they're on the record. Like if you tweet something, or if you go on Fox News and you mm -hmm. say these things, like you are trying to weigh in. And I think what I would imagine is that that kind of argumentation amongst a group of advisors is encouraged from the top. I don't think if if Donald Trump were upset that people were actually arguing about this in public. I think it would stop like that. Uh -huh. So I imagine that he's probably okay with it. He may also want to see how people react to yeah. that. I mean, there's clearly an understandable reflection from the folks that have been pro-Trump for a long time to someone like Romney who trashed him yep. for so long. Now he's got an opportunity. I also does, do think it speaks to the president-elect. And this is a guy who made decisions when he had to mm -hmm. about moving out um, Governor Christie and bringing in Pence at the beginning with. He picked you know, Flynn and Sessions, Pompeo quickly before many other presidents had. But on this one, he's probably conflicted. He had a good meeting with Romney, felt like like he's a smart guy, even after what he's done, but he's loyal to, uh, to Giuliani. Then he hears other names like Petraeus uh, and General, uh, the other general that's out there as well, Kelly, mm -hmm. who's a thoughtful guy. He's probably saying, hey, let's see how this plays out. I've got a little bit of time. Well, yeah. can I just float a really um, interesting theory, which I don't know if I subscribe to, but it's Friday. I'm going to yeah. throw it out it's anyway. It's the holidays. Yes, uh, yeah. It is possible that he's leaving Romney out there to dangle and to be killed by a thousand cuts because Romney was incredibly unkind to him in his view you during the election. And the reason he's doing this is to make Romney appear that he's groveling for a job, that he never has any intention of actually giving Mitt Romney. Hmm. And he's having all these other people come out and talk about what a horrible, horrible human being Mitt Romney was to the president-elect. And the president-elect knows that he's not going to choose Romney, but he's having Romney jump through 20,000 hoops in the attempt to get the job. And ultimately, I suspect, though I would love to see Mitt Romney Secretary of State because other people that are being considered, like Rudy Giuliani, I think are just unacceptable. I don't think Mitt Romney's going to get this job. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm pleasantly wrong. You've been reading wrong. Art of War lately, I think. I've been, I've been or, or some gossip blogs, I'm not sure. Or some high Both. school gossip, or some, yes. or some high school girl that gossip blogs, too. right. Well, it's an interesting Tommy. theory, Julie, but is he really jumping through hoops? I don't see Romney as kind of demeaning himself. He went in, he took a meeting. He's not, I don't think he's going to do this he's apology. He's not said a word. Yes, he hasn't he has said anything. Said and I don't think he should apologize. There's no reason to apologize. He, he would probably want to explain himself. Like, this is what I thought about Trump. This is honestly what I thought. And this is why I'm willing to work with him now. But I don't think he has to but apologize. But he's going to have to, right? He's going to, if he, yes. take, if he takes the job, the first question will be either at a Senate confirmation hearing or even from the press beforehand. Governor Romney, why did you think that Donald Trump was completely unfit to be president of the United States and all the horrible names that you called him over the last 18 months, if not a little less? Why now? Why now, Governor, do you think that you will work for this man that you think is wholly unqualified to be president? He's going to have to say something that's going to sound like an apology. And the question for Romney is, is he willing to do that? And what has changed? Why would he even go to Bedminster last weekend and shake the hand and try to interview with the man that he thinks is totally unqualified to be commander in chief? I don't know the answer to that. Because he wants to serve the country. Well, yeah. I don't know. Dana, what is, what's think, the answer to that question? If he goes I think the answer is kind of easy. Mm -hmm. I think that because Romney was himself at the beginning of this, and so this is what I think, I think that going to Bedminster was part well, I don't really know. I've not talked to anybody on his team or, or to him, obviously. But um, to me, it looked like a moment of patriotic grace, yep. being able to say, okay, obviously, he won, and in a fashion that I couldn't. 
-hmm. So uh, if I believe in public service, and I think Governor Romney does, I think that he could come up with something that says, fine, yes, he, take, he could give one press conference, answer all of those questions, in a confirmation hearing, have the Democrats say, read back all of his words to him and mm -hmm. just say, you're right, I said that. And now I'm ready to serve and in a way that there would be no daylight between Donald Trump and me. Is that enough for an apology? I don't even have a, a, have a problem doing what you're saying. No. I mean, he's an honorable man. A great I actually person. think there's I think a... I could do it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people... <laughs> <laughs> what you, what no, you, I'm not saying I want to do it. I'm just saying... <laughs> if the you Department of the, Interior if you wants all the parks. <laughs> yeah, I know. Parks are, <laughs> but if you gave me that challenge, the communications challenge, and because if I believed it, it's not hard to do a press conference like that if you actually believe what I just said. Sure. I don't know if that's all true, but right. if you do believe that, then it's not difficult. I think, I think he could. He could make the kind of statement where he, he, he's, uh, the patriotic grace that you, you, you're giving him, I think, is authentic. He could have that come across. But I also think Donald Trump is giving patriotic grace back to him. I yeah. think this is a guy who, two and a half weeks into the I process, agree. realizes the gravity, understands the gravity of where he is, and I think is willing to put aside the fact that someone trashed him nine months ago uh, when he was a candidate. He wants to make America great again and be strong on the world stage. And if he feels like Mitt I, Romney's I, the guy to do it, then I, I do think he's putting these things aside and willing to listen, and I think that speaks I to hope the you're right. I hope you're right. Can I make one more point about yeah. it? I do think that Donald Trump is showing in this transition process a willingness to make that big tent of the Republican Party yes. actually a real thing. Mm -hmm. And so let's say you're Donald Trump and you're thinking, okay, so I've got, I know I've got this strong base of support. There are some Republicans who are uncomfortable with me. What can I do to solidify a bigger tent so that I have the most support going forward for this presidency? And Bringing somebody like Tr Romney, and even if he doesn't choose them, I think that actually having them come by was well, worth it. Romney and has he's obviously given it some offer, thought. Yeah, he yeah. has a lot to offer the country, too, for sure. So why wouldn't you, if you're really sincere and genuine, and I believe that the president-elect is, about unifying the country, about creating jobs and doing the things he said he's going to do, you want to have the best and regardless, with you. It has neutralized Romney from criticizing him in the future. No, well, sure. I mean, it's, the right, it's the right thing to do on all levels, so and that smart. remains to be seen if, in fact, he's going to give him a position, Tom. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? The rules are different, because we wouldn't be saying this about Rubio or Cruz, because they were running against him, and the rules are different. Mm -hmm. And I think they're holding Romney to a different standard, because he was calling him a fraud and a phony, but he wasn't running against him. But we, we seem to accept, if you're running against someone, you can hit them hard, as Trump likes to say. Mm -hmm. and, so, and once Trump got the nomination, Romney didn't say another word, mm -hmm. as far as I remember. He also didn't lift a hand. I think uh, he that's did. That's okay. Yeah. That's I think true. he hit him hard during this. Uh, not dur not, I don't think afterwards. Not since the nomination? Maybe, I think he maybe supported Evan McMullen in Utah. But other than that, you didn't see him on TV. He wasn't no, out there trying to act. There were tweets. There were some. He, he hit him with some. Uh, some nasty, nasty tone. <laughs> That's and like well, you know, I think it was at the vulnerable moments, right? So videotape comes out, things yes. like that. He yeah. said things to kind of pile on in those processes. He wasn't yeah. the only one. Well, of course. <laughs> of course, of course not. I mean, there were strong supporters. Who but, also if he, but if he does similar. end up going with Romney, then I think that sends an incredibly strong message exactly about what you said, Dana, right. which is that he wants to expand the tent. I hope he has that in him. It's not a Donald Trump that I think we've seen, the gracious Donald Trump that I have yet to see, but I, I, I truly hope I'm right. The other thing is you saw this weekend that, uh, or it's not the, it's not the weekend yet. It felt like a weekend <laughs> yesterday. But the communication to the Japanese, which is to say, yeah, okay, well, the campaign was the campaign, and right. uh, the new NSA director, uh, Michael Flynn, is like, oh, that was just campaign talk. We're actually, we're good, Japan, and Japan is breathing a sigh of relief, and so everything's okay. So a moment of stability with our allies, if that means Mitt Romney helps in that regard, and they can help him, great. I don't think that means that Rudy wouldn't, or that somebody else that he chose wouldn't necessarily do that, but it is interesting how quickly they could go from very strong campaign rhetoric mm -hmm. too. Like we're good. Yeah. And like you said, once you have the job, what, you see what what the situation is. Yeah. He's been getting the briefings, but, and he met with President Obama, and now it's time to time to govern and to unify. Well, we've also read about the, some concerns, though, that Mitt Romney's perspective on some issues of foreign policy are uh -huh. different than the like president. Russia. Russia. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. with a guy with that stature, with that known entity sure. out as your Secretary of State, you can get out in front of the president a little bit. We've seen that in other instances in history where Secretary of States are a little bit rogue or have right. a little bit of a different position. Well, with Hillary Giuliani, Clinton, you're probably exactly. She had a different position on Syria. Yeah. But you don't know that until she writes her book after she left. And so you can 
have a different position but still carry through in the president's yeah. policy. Sure. And I want to get in the topic. But about if you disagree with it so much, then you have to resign. About sure. Rudy Giuliani, because you know he was like right away the front runner for it. Obviously, Trump loyalists are very strong on him. We saw Newt uh, Gingrich's comments as well. Rudy's got an excellent background, a lot about foreign policy as well in terms of his experiences. So, uh, what do you think about that choice? I think that. He, that Donald Trump would be extremely comfortable with him. Yeah. But that might not necessarily be what Donald Trump is looking for. Maybe he does want to look for some challenges. Not that Rudy wouldn't necessarily provide um, policy challenges, and I think that he would be tireless in his efforts. I, th I think that the signals that they are getting from the Hill is that the confirmation process wouldn't necessarily be as easy as they'd like. Right, and I think if, if the president like had his choice and could make it happen, he would want to put Rudy in because he's been. And I don't think Donald Trump's afraid of a fight with the Congress um, yeah. for some of these nominees. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to fight with for Sessions. some, like the S Sessions probably won. Yeah. Although I think Sessions will probably be smoother than we think because he has a lot of good colleagues up there on the Hill from both sides of the aisle, including Chuck Schumer. But he is going to have to have he's going to have several fights with the Democrats. For example, his Supreme Court nomination. Mm -hmm. So, how many fights do you? Basically, you pick your battles. Sure. Right. right. The art of war. We're going back to exactly. that. Exactly. And so, what do you think about the um, Giuliani? Sure, I think it'd be a strong choice. I, I you may face some resistance in the Congress, but he's also going to have a lot of support as well. Might potentially some Democrat support, some from moderate Democrats, um, and because they would acknowledge that elections have consequences, sure. and if this is who Trump wants as his Secretary of State, uh, it's time to abide by that. So, I think it'd be a strong choice. Yeah, uh, I, think I would sleep right well at night. I'll tell you that much. And yep. I know him very well for many years. All right. Now that he's finished with his Thanksgiving turkey, Donald Trump is stuffing his White House staff, naming former Republican administration official KT McFarland, his deputy national security advisor, and Don McGahn, his White House counsel. McFarland, a foreign policy hawk and Fox News contributor, accused Russia of meddling in the presidential election just last September. And he said it's not a Russian state entity. And then he smiled. What's that? That's an admission that in fact they're doing it. And why do they do it? It's because they can get away with it. But Trump still faces the high-stakes test of choosing his next Secretary of State. A transition source says, in addition to Mitt Romney and Rudy Giuliani, retired General David Petraeus, retired Marine General John Kelly, and Senator Bob Corker are also in the running for the post. It's a battle that has divided the president-elect's world into rival factions between aides who see Romney as the safe choice and staffers loyal to Giuliani. Senior Trump advisor Kellyanne Conway took her thoughts to Twitter, saying, receiving deluge of social media and private comms regarding Romney. Some Trump loyalists warn against Romney as Secretary of State. I would suggest there are a lot of other people who are more qualified than Romney in foreign policy and who are also uh, have not been as actively hostile as he's been. It's not about that I don't care for Mitt personally, but I'm still very unhappy that Mitt did everything he could to derail Donald Trump. He attacked him on a personal level about his character, integrity, his honor. Giuliani boasted about his credentials to the Wall Street Journal, saying, I probably have traveled in the last 13 years as much as Hillary did in the years she was Secretary of State. Romney's world is much more quiet, with wife Ann tweeting on Thanksgiving, thankful today for a full house and full heart. As for Petraeus, the former CIA director who was sentenced to two years of probation after sharing classified information with his lover, told the BBC he's open to serving in government again. I've been in a position before where a president has turned to me in the Oval Office uh, in a difficult moment and uh, turned without any pleasantries and said, I'm asking you as your president and commander in chief to take command of the International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan. The only response can be yes, Mr. President. During the campaign, Trump defended Petraeus, saying he received far worse treatment than Hillary Clinton did from FBI Director James Comey. After reading all of these items where she's so guilty, he let her off the hook. While other lives, including General Petraeus and many others, have been destroyed for doing far, far less. The day after Thanksgiving is traditionally one of the biggest shopping days of the year. We'll go live to a Virginia mall shortly. But first, Donald Trump is also doing some shopping this holiday weekend. He's looking for the very best people to put on his White House team. And tonight, we have a few more answers, but the big question marks remain. Correspondent Peter Ducey is live at the Trump Resort in Palm Beach, Florida. Hello, Peter. 
Good evening, Doug. The president-elect's first order of business after Thanksgiving was naming two officials to top posts, and these two reveal a lot about the direction Mr. Trump plans to take the government. The next White House now has a top lawyer and a deputy national security advisor. The president-elect made former FEC Commissioner Don McGahn well-known in Washington for rewriting rules, literally, the White House counsel. McGahn is said to know a lot about government ethics, making him a valuable asset to an incoming president who pledges to drain the swamp. Mr. Trump today also made KT McFarland a major critic of the Obama administration's anti-terror strategy, who has been in the Pentagon under Reagan. Deputy National Security Advisor. Until earlier today, McFarland was a Fox News contributor. Earlier this week, McFarland outlined the dangerous international chessboard awaiting the next president. Whether it's China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, radical Islam, they all test, a new president always gets tested, but all these countries are lining up to test this new president. As Trump prepares to take over the U.S. government, the Russian government is trying to position itself as the leader in Syria, with a spokesman saying that, quote, if Washington cannot or does not want to fight terrorists, it should not get in the way. Disputes like this one will be handled come January by the next Secretary of State, and the names floated as front runners for that spot, Mitt Romney and Rudy Giuliani, have the transition team taking sides, so much that the incoming administration may now be looking elsewhere for a top diplomat, according to a report in the New York Times that also cites red flags in Rudy Giuliani's business background as the reason he's no longer the shoe-in he believed himself to be. But Romney is still rubbing some Trump backers the wrong way since he effectively campaigned against Trump during the primaries. Trump insiders tell Fox News Romney may need to apologize to Trump if he wants to come on board, which would be fine with some. I hope both of them actually have homes in the administration. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, it's tough to pick because I think they both do a great job. But could still be a problem with others. This election was was a referendum on the Trump doctrine. Trump rejecting globalism, rejecting open borders, rejecting international norms in favor of America first, negotiating from strength, securing the borders. Nobody has been a stronger articulate, articulator spokesperson for that viewpoint than Rudy Giuliani. Mar-a-Lago behind us is being protected right now by land, air, and sea. But back at Mr. Trump's main residence, the New York Post is reporting the Secret Service is trying to figure out how to stake their equipment on two back-to-back -back floors inside Trump Tower. This report says that would cost at least $3 million per year, money that would be paid to the owner of the building, the Trump Organization. Doug? And Peter, we know he's going to be at uh, Mar-a-Lago through uh, the rest of the weekend. What does he have on the agenda for next week? On Monday, Mr. Trump is going to have eight more potential administration job holders, job seekers, come to visit him at his 26th floor office in that Midtown skyscraper. Among them are the well-known Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, the former SEC Commissioner Paul Atkins, and a Republican Pennsylvania Congressman Lou Barletta. Transition officials are telling us tonight, Doug, that they like everybody that's coming on Monday for multiple positions. Peter Ducey from Palm Beach, Florida tonight. Thank you, Peter. The day after Thanksgiving is traditionally one of the biggest shopping days of the year. We'll go live to a Virginia mall shortly. But first, Donald Trump is also doing some shopping this holiday weekend. He's looking for the very best people to put on his White House team. And tonight, we have a few more answers, but the big question marks remain. Correspondent Peter Ducey is live at the Trump Resort in Palm Beach, Florida. Hello, Peter. Good evening, Doug. The president-elect's first order of business after Thanksgiving was naming two officials to top posts, and these two reveal a lot about the direction Mr. Trump plans to take the government. The next White House now has a top lawyer and a deputy national security advisor. The president-elect made former FEC Commissioner Don McGahn well-known in Washington for rewriting rules, literally, the White House counsel. McGahn is said to know a lot about government ethics, making him a valuable asset to an incoming president who pledges to drain the swamp. Mr. Trump today also made KT McFarland a major critic of the Obama administration's anti-terror strategy, who has been in the Pentagon under Reagan. 
deputy national security advisor. Until earlier today, McFarland was a Fox News contributor. Earlier this week, McFarland outlined the dangerous international chessboard awaiting the next president. Whether it's China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, radical Islam, they all tested, a new president always gets tested, but all these countries are lining up to test this new president. As Trump prepares to take over the U.S. government, the Russian government is trying to position itself as the leader in Syria, with a spokesman saying that, quote, if Washington cannot or does not want to fight terrorists, it should not get in the way. Disputes like this one will be handled come January by the next Secretary of State, and the names floated as front runners for that spot, Mitt Romney and Rudy Giuliani, have the transition team taking sides so much that the incoming administration may now be looking elsewhere for a top diplomat, according to a report in the New York Times that also cites red flags in Rudy Giuliani's business background as the reason he's no longer the shoe in he believed himself to be. But Romney is still rubbing some Trump backers the wrong way since he effectively campaigned against Trump during the primaries. Trump insiders tell Fox News Romney may need to apologize to Trump if he wants to come on board, which would be fine with some. I hope both of them actually have homes in the administration. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, it's tough to pick because I think they both do a great job. But could still be a problem with others. This election was a referendum on the Trump doctrine. Trump rejecting globalism, rejecting open borders, rejecting international norms in favor of America first, negotiating from strength, securing the borders. Nobody has been a stronger articulate, articulator spokesperson for that viewpoint than Rudy Giuliani. Mar-a-Lago behind us is being protected right now by land, air, and sea. But back at Mr. Trump's main residence, the New York Post is reporting the Secret Service is trying to figure out how to stake their equipment on two back-to-back -back floors inside Trump Tower. This report says that would cost at least $3 million per year, money that would be paid to the owner of the building, the Trump Organization. Doug? And Peter, we know he's going to be at uh, Mar-a-Lago through uh, the rest of the weekend. What does he have on the agenda for next week? On Monday, Mr. Trump is going to have eight more potential administration job holders, job seekers, come to visit him at his 26th floor office in that Midtown skyscraper. Among them are the well-known Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, the former SEC Commissioner Paul Atkins, and a Republican Pennsylvania Congressman Lou Barletta. Transition officials are telling us tonight, Doug, that they like everybody that's coming on Monday for multiple positions. Peter Ducey from Palm Beach, Florida tonight. Thank you, Peter.